Hey there, Bible buddies. I've got another Bible review for you today. And this one is a King James Version Bible produced by the World Publishing Company in the early 1960s, maybe late 1950s. Um, but I want to go ahead and showcase it for you. We'll start with the box here. This is a two-piece box. It's gold, and it does have the World Bibles logo. I don't know if you can see it there, but the World Bibles logo debossed on the cover. On the cover, on the front of the box. <laughs> this one, unfortunately, didn't have any sort of, um, you know, informational sticker or anything like that. So I'm not too sure if this box went originally with the Bible. I'm guessing it did only because the Bible fits in the box. <laughs> That's about all I can go off of. Uh, and there's the back of the Bible, uh, the back of the box. It's just a white, a white box there. Now, on these older Bibles, they did have these installed. Uh, I removed them, which probably isn't the best thing to do if you're a Bible collector. But, you know, I didn't want them doing what they were doing. Uh, and essentially what these are, uh, these are there to kind of hold the Bible in place and, and also form the yap. Um, so you'll see when I bring the Bible out, the Bible has these like gargantuan creases where these were pressing on it for, you know, about 50 years, 60, 70 years, um, where the leather is like now permanently warped. So I wanted to hopefully try and like unwarp the leather. Uh, so I removed these so that way they're not, they're no longer kind of pressing on the, uh, on the Bible itself. We'll go ahead and take a look at it here in a second. I did want to show you this interesting piece of ephemera first by the World Publishing Company, and it's uh, how to care for your Bible. Uh, your World Bible and how to care for it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and open it up and show it to you. I always love this ephemera stuff. I always think it is so incredibly interesting uh, just to see little printed pieces like this from the time that this was produced. And it just kind of walks you through how to do like a librarian break in uh, and how you should, you know, kind of clean the Bible and take care of it. And then some other little uh, scripture references and things there. So we'll go ahead and grab the Bible right quick. Now, surprise, surprise, this is a white Bible. <laughs> So I'm assuming that this must have been a uh, maybe a, a wedding Bible that somebody would uh, give uh, to a bride on their wedding day uh, so they could carry it and walk down the aisle with it. Uh, thank you, uh, Diane Jane Wedwick, uh, for your contribution to the channel. I certainly appreciate it wherever you are. Um, now, this one is not the original Bible, unfortunately. Uh, I did make some revisions to it. My, my crafty little hands got a hold of it again. Uh, and, you know, I found over the years, uh, over the years of looking on eBay, that white Bibles tend to get um, kind of left by the wayside. They don't often get purchased. Um, so for a while there, I bought a few white Bibles specifically with the intent to kind of dress them up a little bit. Uh, and, you know, the idea of a kind of a white Bible with some yap uh, was just interesting to me. Uh, so let's go, go ahead and take a look. Uh, we have Holy Bible Concordance and along with Diane's name there uh, imprinted onto the Bible cover. There's also a debossed uh, line here, which is interesting. World Bibles did this. Instead of doing an, uh, like an impressed line uh, or like a, what would that be, a embossed line, they did a debossed line. So it actually kind of pops up the perimeter line here. Uh, and I like the way this looks. I wish that uh, more Bible manufacturers would do this. There's a little bit of a yap and the cover is pretty stiff. Um, like the edge of the leather is pretty soft, but the actual cover itself is stiff. Uh, and that might be partially uh, due, to, due to what I did the Bible. I'll show you here in a few minutes. Um, but yes, yeah, so the perimeter line continues uh, to the spine here. And on the spine, we have Holy Bible, Red Letter Edition, and then World. Uh, and there are some raised hubs. Um, now, I'm guessing that they were just kind of uh, kind of debossed onto the, onto the spine there. Um, it doesn't feel like there's any kind of like leather or anything or another material underneath there. But they are pretty raised. You know, you can feel them pretty, pretty easily, pretty readily. Uh, and then on the back, all we have is that line again. And I do not see... World Bibles typically, uh, they had a few places that they would put the... Uh, kind of the type of leather. They did not put it here on the back cover. The back cover is where they put it sometimes. Sometimes they put it on the inside back cover, but we'll take a look in a second. Uh, you can see the gilt there. Looks very well done. I did replace the ribbons with two red ribbons. It looks very nice. And the ribbons I used were two. They're not Beresfords. I don't use Beresfords. They're too expensive for me. Um, but I used uh, just two double-sided uh, satin red ribbons that I had put in there. Uh, and then if I remember correctly, I, th I think I took, <laughs> I think the head and tail bands originally were white. Uh, and I took a, uh, what's that called? A Pigma Micron <laughs> and coloring them black. I figured, hey, Pigma, Rikon, Pig Pigma Microns are, 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 goodness, are archival. That's a tongue twister. Uh, so I figured the, yeah, the eagle hold up for sure. So I just colored it there. Uh, nothing fancy, but I think it looks good with the, the black, white, and red. I'm, I'm always a fan of that color combination. Uh, so we'll go ahead and open up the Bible real quick. And you can see what I did. <laughs> I added these these colorful end sheets. Uh, for a while there, I was kind of going nuts on end sheets and ribbon replacements. Uh, I felt like every Bible should be updated, which, again, probably isn't the best thing to do if you're a vintage Bible collector. 
Uh, but you know, certain Bibles, I feel like, um, you know, maybe their, their collectability might be a little bit lower because the name is, uh, embossed on the front or debossed on the front. And then, you know, the fact that it's a white cover and it's kind of beaten up, seen, seen some better times. So I figured maybe the collectability was a little less on this one. So I was okay with, uh, you know, doing this, my Bibles, I would say always, uh, just, just, you know, have a, a second thought before you do this kind of stuff. Uh, but certainly it's fun. So <laughs> I changed the end sheets here. Uh, I think originally it was just like a white, um, like a white synthetic material. Um, almost like a vinyl kind of material coming across the span here. But I got rid of those uh, and put the paper on. And then we have genuine leather here uh, imprinted on the back inside of the cover. Now World Bibles will either do it here or they'll put like a little like a little flag here that says genuine leather. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to show you um, at some point in another World Bible. We'll get to it, right? All right. On the inside we have... A couple pages of thicker paper. It's not really cardstock. It's just thicker paper. It's not really Bible paper. It's like note, note paper. And then we have the presentation page, which is going to fill out with uh, with her information there. I'm assuming that's her. That, that must have been maybe her wedding day. I don't know. I don't know her. So, but it's got a date there also, uh, 1960. So I'm assuming the Bible was produced before that date. One would one would imagine. Uh, then we have the title page, uh, the Holy Bible. There you go. Contains the Old and New Testaments, the World Publishing Company, out of Cleveland and New York. And then we have some more publication information there on the bottom as well. And then we have the Epistle Dedicatory. And the books of the Old and New Testament. And a pronunciation key. And then it gets right into the Bible. The first book of Moses called Genesis. I'll go ahead and take a look here at this text. Now there is a double line drop cap there at the beginning of the chapter. Uh, and it looks like they use pilcrow marks right there to indicate where the paragraphs start. Uh, but as you see, this is just a plain text Bible. Um, there isn't really anything to write home about. There's no references. There's no footnotes. Uh, there are running headers here at the top. You do have the page numbers in the center. And then you have the chapter, uh, sorry, the chapter and the book name uh, in the top corners. And now this is a pronouncing text, so you will see pronunciation marks throughout. Uh, now, World Bibles, I do like, but I feel like, oh, and there's, there's an illustration, but we'll hang out here for a second. Uh, World Bibles, I feel like, um, were kind of entry-level Bibles. Uh, the construction is very good on them, don't get me wrong. Um, the paper isn't quite as good as, say, like an India paper. Um, but it is still pretty nice. This paper is pretty thin. It's a little on the hard side to turn because they do tend to stick together. Um, and uh, the paper is very smooth, though. And one thing I have noticed with World Bibles is I don't know if the paper, if the ink, sorry, uh, if the ink is uh, water-based. Because I've noticed if I handle it with, like, say, um, say, clammy hands, I guess, I notice the ink will start to smudge. Like, if I keep, you know, touching one specific spot of the page or something like that. So it's just something to be aware of. Uh, I don't necessarily think that was all editions of World Bibles. Um, but some editions, um, I'd, I'd have to like, I'd have to check around and probably get back, back to you guys. I'd have to get back to you guys with the specifics on that. But let's go ahead and take a look at the illustration here. It says the infant Moses saved from the Nile. And it gives you the verse reference there. We'll take a look at the other side too. Uh, this one does have illustrations and I like illustrations. I know some people aren't, aren't fond of illustrations, but I don't mind them. You know, as long as they're biblically accurate, which I feel like doesn't happen very often. Uh, it always makes me laugh when, when Jesus has blonde hair and blue eyes, you know. Let's keep going here. And here's a, in the Psalms, we'll take a look at the poetic uh, sections, but there's no poetic settings. Again, it's just a double column, verse by verse. You will notice here that the uh, separation between the two columns is pretty narrow. And the, the text does kind of go into the gutter. I would say it just kind of, yeah, it goes into the gutter. Uh, it is a pretty thin volume, um, but still, um, Bibles from back then, the gutters, you know, the text always, almost always ran into the gutters. Uh, this is certainly no exception. There's another illustration. The wise men worship Jesus. Oh, now here's an interesting little thing between the Testaments. You have this kind of family, family page here. Let's pull this out real quick. So you have the end of the Old Testament. And then you have um, this sort of uh, marriage page, I guess. And then it shows, uh, I guess you fill this out for your whole, your entire family, but it shows the births, the marriages, and the deaths. 
And then on the flip side, you have your family tree, which is pretty interesting. I've gotten a few of these editions, uh, not this specific edition, but I've gotten a few uh, vintage Bibles with this sort of thing. And some people fill them out. Um, I'd say it's kind of rare, though, that people fill them out. I don't see them fill that very often. Then you have your New Testament title page. And of course, it's a red letter. <laughs> you can take a look at World's Red Letter. Um, not the best in the game, that's for sure. But we'll have a look-see. Oh, there we go. Let's get one more page. We'll get right into the thick of it, right? Oh, look at that red letter. All right, so take a look. We'll get you nice and close here. Now, again, uh, this paper is not, I, mean, I don't think it's India paper, um, but still, it's not bad considering the fact that it's not India paper. Um, the show through isn't very bad. Uh, the text is not, um, like, I don't, I don't want to say it's not, like, specifically line matched. I guess it kind of is line matched because there's no, I don't do any, like, subheads or anything, so it does end up being pretty line matched. Um, but, yeah, the, but the red letter, back to the red letter. <laughs> but the red letter... Uh, the red letter is a pretty good red letter. I have seen some very vibrant pink red letters from World. Uh, I don't know if it's just like a, you know, it depends on what year you get or on the model. Um, sometimes World's red letter is a little, like I said, on the pink side. This one is not so bad. It's red um, and it's vibrant, uh, but it's not super, super pink or anything like that. It's a good, it's a good color red. So we'll keep flipping through here. The print is nice and dark. I'll show you some of the black print. Print is nice and dark. And even though, again, even though it's not India paper, um, the paper does pretty well for itself to help mitigate show through. So there's not very much show through. And another illustration here. Let's take a look. Christ in, in the temple at the age of 12. There we go. We'll get to the end here. There are a few helps in the end, at the end here. A little chunky section. So we go to the end of Revelation, and then we have the Bible, the Bible readers aids, and that's the uh, thickness of it all. Now again, I do wonder how much of this kind of was used across the board uh, by all the brands, because I do like I know this from Malachi to Matthew. This articles I've seen in a, in a few of them, proving the Old Testament. I've seen in a few of them. Uh, you know, obviously you see, you see them in World Bibles with helps. But uh, I kind of feel like I've seen these same helps kind of across the different brands. Christian Worker and his Bible. Items Informing and Concerning the Bible. Harmony of the Gospels again. Great Periods of Bible History. The Lord's Prayer. A little bit of everything. It's a calendar reading plan. Then we get done with the helps. It's got a few articles. It's got a little bit of everything. But you get done, when you get done with the helps, uh, you have a concordance. If I remember correctly, this concordance is a pretty good size. Let's flip through it right quick. Is a two column concordance. Goodness, that is a big one. Yeah, so there you go. Pretty thick concordance there. I'll take a quick look at it so you guys can see if you're interested in the concordance of a world Bible from the late 1950s. <laughs> there you go. Uh, then you have a few blank pages. Then it gets into the maps. Not too shabby. The maps are kind of on like a, it's a thicker paper and it kind of has like a waxy uh, texture to it. Um, so I probably wouldn't recommend trying to write on it with anything maybe other than a Sharpie. Uh, which reminds me, I have to get my Sharpie in here for uh, size reference. You got a couple more blank pages after that. Then you have the end sheet there. And there is a little code that says 34C. Uh, it looks like there's something before it, but I can't really make it out. Two, maybe, a 234C, which I'm assuming is the model number, and then 460Q. Uh, so maybe the fourth month of 1960 or the fourth printing of 1960. I'm not too sure. So let me throw in the Sharpie here for reference, size reference. There you go. So whoop, let me get it in frame. There you, there you go. There you go. All right, I'm getting it. Slowly but surely. All right, and let's go ahead and get measurements on it. Now it is uh, just over eight inches, about like eight and a sixteenth of an inch tall. And then width wise, it is right at five and a half inches wide and in thickness. Now this is a pretty thin edition. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty thin. Uh, it is just over an inch, like an inch and an eighth thick. So not too crazy, not too shabby. Good mid-sized Bible there. Let's take a look at the font size. 
You see, oh, oh, David slays Goliath. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I always love the Bible's illustrate this. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look here. Uh, we will do, let's do uppercase first. And we'll do the, I don't know, the I and if. Um, looks like an eight and a half point font for a nine. Maybe a nine. What would nine? Looks like a nine. No. Eight and a half. We'll go with eight and a half. For the uppercase and then for the lowercase, we'll do the M and May. And it looks to be a nine also. So yeah, this is a nine point font. So you have a nine point font here uh, in comparison to a Times New Roman. Uh, so yeah, there you go. This is a world Bible. Uh, again, King James Version from the early, well, I guess early 1960s, maybe late 1950s. Uh, from what I can tell from 1960. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, if you could uh, like, subscribe to the channel, all that good YouTube stuff. Bible Buddies, until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye.